Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Bryony and I'm one half of the Indecisive Readers. Today I am here to do what I hope is an original book tag and that is the Hunger Games book tag. Sam and I have created it, I have done some research and I don't think it exists or at least it doesn't exist in the same way. But anyway, we are here, I'm here to ask you some questions and try and answer them myself and if you want to you can join in. My cat friend is here to join us. Cat. There are 14... There are 14 questions that you can join in with. Try and answer them all and if you can't don't worry, I'm not sure I can answer them all. But we're just going to jump in and see what we can do. Question 1. District 1 specialises in producing luxury items. Choose a book with a beautiful cover. For this I have chosen Ink by Alice Broadway. I got this out of the library and I remember picking it up specifically because it was a pretty looking book and therefore I kind of have to answer the question with it. It's not necessarily a book I loved but the cover is really pretty. It's that kind of shiny gold metallic kind of thing and it's all about tattoos and so the cover is beautiful to match that. Hello. Question 2. District 2 has one of the highest number of Hunger Games victors because of the careers. Children that illegally train for the games from a young age. Name a character you always expect to win. I could choose so many books for this because what main character don't you expect to win? I'm going to answer this question with Harry Potter from the Harry Potter series because the books are literally named after him. There is no point in the series that you don't expect him to win. He's the chosen one. Hello. You happy, cat? Question three. District three creates technology and electronics for Panem. Choose a sci-fi book. I haven't read loads of sci-fi books, it's not a genre I generally pick out. The books I do read are generally recommended to me, but the one I have chosen for this is The Illuminae Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I really enjoyed these series, I know that generally a lot of people do, but if you don't like them you kind of tend to hate them. But I wrote an essay on how the format of the book is quite interesting and unconventional and it's quite a good entry point for reading sci-fi. Come in. Question four. One of District 4's most famous victors is Finnick O'Dare. Name a character you instantly fell in love with. There are a few ways you could answer this. They could be characters that just do amazing things. They could be characters you fancy. They could be any way you want to read that. My answer for this is Rosie from The Rosie Project because she came into the story, completely took over and really made her impact. I haven't read the first book in like three years, maybe more, actually definitely more, it's probably coming up to four years, but I just remember her coming in, changing the clocks and really making an impact on the book. I think she is a force to be reckoned with. Question five. District 5's surprisingly good tribute in the 74th Hunger Games is Foxface, a sneaky, clever person. Choose a book with a sneaky plot twist. It wasn't necessarily a plot twist, but it was a way for the book to go that I wasn't expecting, and that was the last 70 pages of The City of Brass, which is the first book in the David Bad trilogy. I remember getting to the like final 70 page mark in the book and thinking, nothing more can happen in this, it's all going to be okay and then it wasn't all okay, it all went wrong then and it still blows me away to this day. Question 6. District 6 is the hub of transport in Panem. Choose a book that features a journey. The book I'm going to choose for this is North Child by Edith Patu. This is a middle grade I want to say but it's quite a chunky middle grade book about a girl who goes with a white bear to save her family and she goes to a castle and then someone comes to rescue her or does she leave? 
I can't remember. There is journey in it involved and she travels on a white bear. Question seven. District seven specializes in lumber and paper. Which book on your TBR uses the most trees? So that's the thickest book. The longest one I haven't read is the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but the trilogy of six. So many, many pages. I haven't read it. I kind of haven't thought about it before this year but I think I'd quite like to. It's meant to be very good, a lot of people like it and someone got it for me so I probably should read it at some point. Question 8. District 8 specialises in textiles. Choose a book that weaves new stories into old. So for this of course I'm going to include The Priory of the Orange Tree which is one of my favourite books of all time. It is a feminist retelling of George and the Dragon but it also has some Japanese folklore elements to it. It's just so good. There are so many stories in this, not only the original George and the Dragon, but other stories that form a part of the narrative that are kind of moralistic or just nice stories. Question nine. Grain is such a vital part of life and that is what District 9 produces. Choose a book you can't live without. For this question I have chosen Am I Normal Yet by Holly Bourne. This is the first book in the Spencer Club series and it's an important book for me because I wrote an essay about it and that's what made me realise I really enjoyed children's literature and more specifically young adult literature and also without this book I wouldn't have met Sam and obviously that's a big part of my life now and so to say I couldn't live without is wrong but it's an important part of my life now. Question 10. District 10 produces livestock. Choose a character that's down to earth. For this one, I'm going to answer both characters in the flat share because they're both quite chill and they're both characters I would love to be friends with. They're not magic, sword wielding, magical beings. They're just normal people that like cake and like working on books and fall in love through post-it notes rather than the end of a sword or something and I would like to be both of their friends. Question 11. District 11, home of the beautiful Rue, which character death affected you most? I don't know if it's the first book I cried at but it's one I really remember being upset by and that was Marley from Marley and Me. I'm sure I completely expected it because it's a dog, it's a story about a dog's impact on a life and I will cry at character deaths but animals get me more because I have animals and maybe I don't like people <laughs> but the first one I re really remember like blubbing at was Marley. Question 12. District 12 had only had two victors before the 74th Hunger Games. Name a character you never expected to win. This is basically the opposite to my earlier question, but I'm going to answer this with Mia from the Nevernight Chronicles, basically because on like the first page or the first chapter, you get told she's not gonna survive. So all through the series, you just know she's not gonna live. And whilst you expect her to win some fights, you never expect her to win the final fight. Question 13. District 13 existed before Rebellion destroyed it. Name a book that the world tried to destroy but still came back fighting. So think banned books. There are so many books that have been banned and I think if a book hasn't been banned it feels like it's not a proper book sometimes. That's a lie. So many books haven't been banned but I think there was a craze maybe in the 20th century where books wanted to be banned. For this I have chosen Madame Bovary which I had to read for class and think I more or less read, didn't understand and then I remember being in a lecture and our lecturer explained to us why it was quite so scandalous because I obviously didn't pay attention enough to the story to realise that the significance of a naked hand against the window was the fact that the rest of them were naked. Question 14. The capital is full of so many crazy people. 
Name the most extra character. The character I have chosen for this is Marcellus Pye from the Septimus Heap series. He turns up in book three, which is Physic, which I'm reading at the moment. And he's an alchemist from about 500 years ago. And being an alchemist on its own is quite extra. But he obviously wears robes because he's magical and in the 15th century. But he wears these crazy shoes that are so long that you have to tie them onto your knees to not trip over. Now, I think that is pretty extra. I think putting fashion above your safety is pretty, pretty strong contender for being the most extra. And the final question, question 15 is, will you volunteer as tribute for this tag? I hope you enjoyed this tag. If you did, please consider yourself tagged. I'm not going to tag anyone, but when you do it, feel free to tag people. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you are planning on doing this and send it to me using my social media links. Tag me on Twitter or Instagram, wherever you're going to post it. Let me know if you're doing it. Me and Sam had loads of fun creating it. I had more fun coming up with the answers than I realised I would. And I look forward to seeing how the rest of you do it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!